Actually, um, how all this started was Jack Gallian, Mr. Gallian, I believe his daughter is married and still lives in town, and his wife, Jean, started the um, old dance group. And why? Because Jack Gallian grew up on the Orkney Islands. And he told us on the village green, they used to do the gay gardens, the quadrille, and all these dances that date back actually to Governor Simcoe's days. And uh, so uh, when he came to live here, he interested a few of his friends, and in no time there were, I think it was six couples, or was it even eight? Either, I think it was more like six. And he taught them diligently. And then when they had learned and knew to dance well and each had a lovely gown made and the men had uniforms of the period, we are going back now to Simcoe days, they decided something should be done and we should have a ball. And um, I wasn't... Uh, I was on the executive, but I was not yet on the committee of the ball. But in 19, um, I think it was, it started in 1965, Jack did it the first time, and uh, on a smaller scale. And then the next year I was asked to do the costumes which meant not making them, but seeing that everybody who took part in the ball either got one from Malabar in Toronto or had it made and so on. And uh, the men had amazing uniforms. I mean, they were the genuine thing, you know. And um, the, uh, the um, men who represented... Um, Governor Simcoe was a dentist from Niagara, from um, St. Catherine's, Dr. Parks, and his wife. And they were Governor Simcoe and his lady. And they again, uh, and then there was, was Jack and Jean, and um, oh, there was Mr. Hamilton and his lady, and so on. They all took historical titles. And... Uh, uh, as I say, that, that f first time I was very busy. There were also serving girls who came from the high school, which again my husband was able to find. And um, they each, either somebody, mother made it for them, and they all had the most adorable costumes, and we made mob caps for them, which was the thing of the time. Then the next year, they asked me to co-chair the ball, and Dick Messiah was the chairman. And um, uh, that was easing me into it, and uh, I did it with pleasure. Then in 1970 was my first time as chairman. And the first thing that happened, the fire marshal, Mr. Flynn at that time, came and said, we can't have unprotected candle. We can't have candlelight in the public place. And since the ball was being held in the courthouse, I um, I was, you know, first to be taken aback and uh, Willis Mook, who was the publicity man, and Dick Messiah was past chairman, we all sat together and we invited the chief and right to my house, and we had a meeting, and we decided, um, he decided, yes, you can have candles as long as they are protected. So, hurricane shades. Where to take 40 hurricane shades? So I wrote to Corning Ware, and they actually donated 40 hurricane shades to us. Great big things. And... Um, they arrived a week before the ball, having sort of asked for them three months before. And, of course, it made all the difference. You know, the fire marshal was happy. It was quite justified for him to be 
concerned, you know. And they were in the middle of each table, and the candlelight is so beautiful. It really added a lot. And um, from then on in, the ball had become a big thing. Uh, and it went all told from its modest beginning in 65 to 75. So for 10 years, and I chaired it for three years, I was co-chair, one year, three years chairman, and then two years past chairman. And um, I never forget the first time when I was chairman, and um, we came from the small hall where we were having our cocktail. No, our shrub. We had everything of the period. And Ann Stokes was wonderful. She um, got hold of all these recipes, so even the food was reminiscent of those days. And then the shrub was a mixture of raspberry juice and some liquor went in. And then there were, we always had some non-alcoholic shrub. And um, we did have to have a bar somewhere on the side for those who can't live without it. <laughs> 